my musical part actually uh, became very solid. I did, however, uh, break away from it when uh, the Korean War started, and I uh, went in and I entered into the Air Force. Uh, that kind of eliminated me getting involved in any more music. <laughs> when I got out of the Air Force, uh, and even while I was in it to a certain extent, I got interested in how I could take information that I was working with and put it in a cohesive manner so that I can do things with it. And uh, when I got out of the service, uh, I was working for, I moved from San Diego to uh, General Electric uh, and they asked me to uh, do some work that I'd never done before. The first thing was to, uh, cake, to, to make the characters that exist on your checks. And they had created a thing called an MICR, Magnetic Ink Character Reader, and that was uh, created for one of the big companies that General Electric serviced. And so they said, give us a character set. I said, okay. It took me about six or seven months to actually come up with what's now on the checks and they were accepted as uh, being the things that we have today. And that's how I got started in really the structure of data and how it was controlled and what we did with it. I, I didn't have anybody. I did not go to school for it. I did, uh, I did get a master's in uh, mathematics all except the term paper I was supposed to put out, and I didn't see any value to it. So then I went on to another uh, class. I knew that at some point in time, I really didn't know when, but there were going to come to a time when uh, the design and manufacture of things were going to require a different base than the two-dimensional base that existed at that time. So I finally found a school in uh, not too far from here, about 12, 15 miles from here that actually uh, had a master's in uh, the field of basically handling data. It was a really great uh, chance for me to go in and work and I did and I got a master's there. That got me into, I think eventually, UCI. At General Electric, I was at General Electric uh, for about five years, actually four years, uh, and it was until I did the character set, and then after that I created a, a software package that drove uh, the things for machining. And because of that, uh, General Electric said that they wanted me to automate a steel mill. Well, me automating a steel mill is like you know, my dog running uh, the biggest race in the world or something. But I went back to uh, uh, Pittsburgh and uh, to brought my family and did actually go in and figure out how to automate a steel mill. It took me a year and then I had 12 people working for me. And at the end of the year, we actually had automated the complete mill. Now, that type of data is a lot different than the two-dimensional things we usually saw in design information. To go in and, and to create what the 3D uh, factors were in automating a mill. And that's where I really got involved in it, to the point where it wasn't too far away from me starting my own company. Because I don't like to have to work for other people who are putting me in a direction that I really can't produce what I want to produce. After General Electric, I went on my own. I, I, didn't, I opened my own company and uh, did my own stuff. And actually, I reached the point where uh, the industry was coming to me for the three-dimensional designs. I had over 100 companies, the major companies, uh, were coming to me for the 3D design work. And then I got uh, involved in work that is classified. I can say some of it was nuclear, and I did get involved in that. Uh, and then I got involved in the space shuttle. Uh, and in the space shuttle, there's one thing that caused problems when it was first created, and that's the 
tiles that were on the very top of it. And when that entered space it, uh, coming into uh, uh, land, or not land, but uh, coming into the earth again, it was supposed to melt. And what happened is that all of these things fell off instead of melting. And consequently, uh, the company that was doing the space shuttle couldn't figure out how to solve it. I was here in town uh, at that time, not too far from here, and uh, probably five miles from here at the most, and uh, they sent over three guys to our, my office and said, we got to do it. Well, it took us about uh, six or seven days. It wasn't too much. And we went in and got it done, got that whole thing so that they never had a problem after that. And because of that, that opened up the door to other uh, problems that existed not in the space shuttle, but in things that had to do uh, with... Actually, what happened is that I got involved in the data that is used for nuclear work. And uh, it is extremely, it was extremely uh, difficult when they asked me to, after I'd done some of the other work, they asked me if I could go over and see the problem because they were having a lot of fatal fatalities. Two pieces of metal coming together and exploding. And so they asked if I would at least try to find an answer for it. And they gave me a room to work in and my own computers and everything that existed like that. And I went in and scratched my head for a while, looked at all the things they had, and then I went home and uh, came back here. This was uh, over in uh, San Antonio, Texas. And uh, then I thought, okay, I'm going to go back over and walked in my room. It was really funny because that room, by the time I had started, was full of data that no one else could see. And the second time I went back to that facility, I found an armed guard on each side of the doors to get into the room. And it turned out I had the only access to it. But I did go in and I found out what was happening in the manufacturing process that would cause explosions. And it wasn't very hard to actually go in and find out what the real reasons were. So I put it in, activated it, and left. And I went back a month later just to see what was happening. Everything was fine. Another month I went back and I was going to go into the room to see if I could test, see if it was still working. And they wouldn't let me in because I no longer had a high enough clearance to go into that room. <laughs> and I said, well, I created that. And they said, too bad. We don't need you anymore because we haven't had a problem now in over three months. So I, I thought I was, pretty, I, I was pretty happy about that. You know, I'm, I'm very happy to get out of there. <laughs> I was uh, right down the road here.